Wi-Fi Sheep would like to say a huge thank you to all of you that kindly support us. Help us continue to bring new videos like this. Join patreon.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep from just $1 a month. October the 4th, 2021 will forever go down in history as the day that Facebook crashed. Everyone took to Twitter with some proudly proclaiming that their teletext or BBS services were still running and showing news stories about the crash. Many of you here in the UK might well remember the BBC CFAX or commercial teletext services that ran alongside analogue broadcast television from the mid 70s through to 2020, 12 and digital switchover. Well, many enthusiasts kept these 8-bit bulletin boards alive and up to date. Coincidentally, around the same time as the Facebook crash, myself as Wi-Fi Sheep had just had a mention on such a service called Telstar. And that's what we're going to look at today with a little help via a Raspberry Pi. But first, do you have a need for reliable, cost-effective web hosting for your blog, business or personal website? If so, then look no further than Cheap Host UK. Cheap Host UK's basic plans start from only 58 pence per month. That's $6.99 a year. And if you're needing a little bit more, Cheap Host UK's premium packages start from just £1.41 a month or £16.99 a year, complete with a free .co.uk domain. New customers can also take advantage of an extra 10% discount when purchasing any first-time hosting package or domain name from Cheap Host UK. Use discount code CHEAP to get an extra 10% off. For reliable, cost-effective web hosting and domain names, look no further than Cheap Host UK. Full details and an affiliate link are in the description to this video. So in order to try this out, I'm going to be using a Raspberry Pi 400. The operating system we'll use is RISC-OS Direct, so not Linux. And because it's RISC-OS Direct, it doesn't support Wi-Fi at time of recording. So we do need a hardwired Ethernet network cable connected to a modem. Okay, so that's now cabled in. So we'll power up. So here we are at the Viscress Direct desktop and I want to go to NetSurf. And we'll do a quick search for Telstar Video Text. We'll just search. And it should be the first result here, so we'll click. There we go. And we want to look at Telstar Video System. And it talks about how to connect and use the device. And if we scroll right down, we should find RiskRest 5 Raspberry Pi, that's us here. Uh, risk rest direct is risk rest fine uh, if you're not familiar with risk rest direct do check out our series playlist is on the screen right now um, but basically to make this work we need to use a driver program uh, called hearsay and it gives you a link to david pilling's website now this program is quite a few years old now but We'll click to download. We'll click and we'll click and drag our program. And so we have this zip called hearsay that we'll unzip. And uh, let's just make a new directory. Uh, we'll call this Telstar. And into Telstar, we'll click and drag the contents of the zip. There we go. Right, so hopefully, if we double click. Oh dear, right, so, um, yeah. 
This unfortunately is uh, an issue, especially with older software that's not been updated in over a decade. So this was 2012, it's now 2021, so nine years. A lot has changed in the world of Pi. This program was probably written before the um, Raspberry Pi, but it'll probably come out just as the Raspberry Pi originally came out. Oh dear, okay, so I think we'll just try a slight change of plan and we may need to swap out our board and go back to something like an original Pi 1 or something to see if we can get this to work. Bear with me. So when uh, software compatibility issues start arising, especially for Risk OS, it's always good to fall back on an original Raspberry Pi from 2011-2012. This is my original first uh, Raspberry Pi Model B. Uh, the type, different uh, board form factor, one with cables is coming off at all different angles. Uh, I've added the heat sinks. I still got the original box for it as well. So scarily, these things are now kind of becoming retro. They're what, about 10 years old now? Um, but this will be perfect for what we need. If you find with Risk OS software doesn't run, it's generally not compiled properly for the newer chipsets. This is a problem with Risk OS. So one of these or a Raspberry Pi Zero, which is the new type you can still buy with the original processor, uh, should be fine. So slight issue we have got, uh, which we need to address, is SD cards. Of course, we're all now using the micro SD format for Raspberry Pi. The original board here uses a full size SD card. It's not a problem. I have here an adapter. So we'll just slide the mini into a full size adapter. We'll put the adapter in. Uh, the power supply is the old types. This is a Raspberry Pi 3 power supply, which is a um, micro USB, yeah, micro USB connector. Full size HDMI, of course. And with the Model B originally had the uh, ethernet jack, which we need for a uh, network connection for this. And then we've got the two, um, only two USBs on this. So this was before they started putting four USBs on. Um, yeah, fun times. Early days of uh, the sort of new generation of hobbyist computing. Anyway, Raspberry Pi 2012 uh, Model B will save the day. So let's get booting up and we'll see if we can make this work. So I'll just wait for the Model B to boot up. It will boot up quite quickly. As I said, Risk Rest Direct works fast with pretty much all Raspberry Pi models. So and we'll still get a good performance out of this. Possible one or two glitches. Obviously, it's more designed for newer Pies now, um, but we should be fine. So we're just waiting for the internet connection to connect in. So this will take a moment. And it's actually what's slowing it down. It's just uh, establishing a uh, ethernet connection over USB. There we go. So first thing we want to do is we'll middle click the cog down here and we'll uh, left click configure. And we'll just go and have a quick look at what our network is doing. Internet interfaces, in our case, want to make sure that it's USB 0, Ethernet over uh, USB. Uh, that's configured and you want it via DHCP. And we can check our status. And yeah, there is something uh, coming through. We've got a uh, IP address established. So yeah, that's all looking good. We are actually connected. So let's uh, find our Telstar. This is what we loaded with the Pi 4, but of course the program didn't run. However, now, hopefully, there we go, it will run without problems and we can bring up a new terminal. If we middle click and we can ask the terminal to be a view data terminal. Just something like that. And you'll notice we've got a little keypad here. So we should now be ready. So I now want an address and a port number. So hopefully with a bit of luck, uh, we look at the website, we need to type in glassttycom comma space and then the port which we want to connect to which is 6503. And there we go, we're actually now into Telstar and there is the welcome screen. So it says press hash to continue. And we have a menu screen, so very much like the old Teletext CFAX on TV or the BBS bulletin board, which was sort of a forerunner of the modern internet. Here is a modern bulletin board that we're actually using uh, via this uh, terminal program and a modern internet connection. So Jim, let's have a look at, um, let's have a look at news and weather. And we can access BBC News on one. 
and it just looks so much like the old teletext doesn't it uh, so uh, world news who's it world news for example and that's the current news at the moment we can go back to index and let's go to again let's have a look at weathers on nine so here's the weather map and press hash to continue and it will ask for city or town now i was trying to put in telford but you see what's happening is it's double typing letters oh it has found it though I have a feeling my BARD rating might be a little bit too high. So yeah, so it gives you the uh, rough uh, temperature for this part of the world. So clouds, broken cloud, 13.5. Uh, yeah, it's not warm at the moment for October. It's really dropped in temperature. But yeah, that's great. So let's hit index to go back. Now, one of the reasons I wanted to bring this term a lot was I really wanted to show you something. So uh, number eight or option eight, which is Micronet 800. There's Micronet, and let's press for a, uh, a screen or a option screen. So, magazine, uh, micro news, what's new? So, we'd say one, what's new? And option two, see it flashing there? Retro Computer Festival 2021. And there is a quite brilliant advert on the Telstar system for the up and coming Retro Computer Festival in Cambridge that I as Wi-Fi Sheep will be attending. I'm not sure if by the time this video comes out if the event will have been and gone or if I'll get the video out this week prior to going. Either way, here it is. So if we put um, hash again and it tells you some information. And there's a list of exhibitors and there is number 18 Wi-Fi sheep, Tom Williamson's. This is really cool. And why I'm showing you this because why I'm actually on the Telstar system, and I only knew about this uh, yesterday. So if I now type 18, so 18, and there we are. Wi-Fi sheep, Tom Williamson. Thomas theme is modern retro, tiny basic computers, uh, real programmable, own build, 8-bit uh, basic computers that anyone can make. Risk Rest Direct, a modern 32-bit Archimedes OS for the Pi, and much, much more. And I think it's quite telling to have that here actually running on Riskgrass Direct, um, which I think is pretty cool. So, yeah, that's a great little system. I'll dump the links into the description to this video. Of course, if faffing around with drivers or hardware isn't really your thing, and you just want to quickly and easily scroll through the pages of Telstar or any other BBS or Teletext style service, then you can do so from the comfort of your web browser. We're back here at Glass TTY, and if we scroll down, you can see there's a small section here for web browser and a link. We click the link. We get a console terminal. This is on a different site. And we can now select a number of services, including Telstar Fast, Click connect. There we go. And let's press one. And we're going to find the page the other day. So let's uh, press eight. There we go. And hash for menu. Um, one for magazine. And there is the advert for the Retro Community Festival, which at time recording hasn't happened. It starts tomorrow, so I will be driving up tomorrow. Um, there's the latest news, and we should be able to just... There we go. Wi-Fi sheet was still on there. 1.8. And there we go. You can, of course, uh, save pages if you want, and they'll appear in a save frame section down here. And then you've got downloads for the file itself, so you can actually download what you've saved. So there we go. That was a look at the Telstar BBS Teletext service as it was back in October 2021. 
If you want to find out more, you can visit glassytty.com. If you're new to the channel, then welcome. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. For all the latest channel news and updates, you can follow me on Twitter. That's at Wi-Fi Sheep on Twitter. And as always, thank you very much for your company and I hope to see you real soon right here on the channel. Until next time, bye for now.